Welcome to Better Sex, where you get the information and inspiration to create and enjoy your best possible sex life. Join your host, sex therapist Jessa Zimmerman, as she brings you expert guests, helpful tips, knowledge, and strategies to improve your intimate relationships. And now, your host, Jessa Zimmerman. Hi, everybody. I'm Jessa, and I'm so happy you're here for this episode of Better Sex. I've dedicated my professional life to helping couples enjoy a fulfilling, intimate life. I believe that sex is important. Our connections to other people matter, and we're not living our life to the fullest if we aren't connecting emotionally and sexually with our partner. That's why I'm here, bringing ideas and information to help you live and love better. You know, sometimes in my therapy practice, I end up recommending, you know, what's going to be called a sex toy, Uh, although I think of them generally as aids to sexual pleasure. Like they really are serving a purpose. It's not just fun and games, you know. And it's interesting. I mean, of course, it's easy to find them all over the web these days. There's This is way more prevalent in public than it ever used to be. It's not a shameful thing. It's, it, you can sort of find it anywhere and you can order things anonymously online. But I thought it would be interesting to have a conversation with really the oldest purveyor of sex toys, of AIDS to sexual pleasure that there is in the U.S. So adamandeve.com is a site for mostly sexually related products, you know, DVDs, toys, lubes, uh, lingerie, things like that. And I've got a chance to talk to Katie Zvolerin, who is now in charge of PR for the company. Now, originally, she was hired, I think, kind of shortly after college as a copywriter. <laughs> you know, think about that. You know, you've, you've got a degree in journalism, and there you go, working for a, um, a sex toy magazine a catalog, really, at the time. Uh, So she started as a copywriter, but now she's a director of PR. And I got a chance to have her on the show and talk about Adam and Eve, the history, a little bit of the ins and outs of the business. And I do want to mention she did offer for you, for my listeners, a discount code. So you can use the code at Adam and Eve, use the code BETTER50, and you will get 50% off and free shipping on one item. I think she said on almost anything that they have. So that is a great deal and a great offer and a good a good, I guess, excuse to go visit and see what you might use your discount on. So anyway, here's the show, and I hope you like it. Hey, Katie, thanks so much for being on the show today. Definitely. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So, I mean... I guess I want you to talk a little bit about yourself and how you got into this. And I think, you know, one way to ask that would be how, how did a nice girl like you get into this <laughs> into this business? <laughs> yeah, well, I never um, pictured myself being here. And I've, I've been here almost 25 years now. Oh, so, wow. Um, yeah, a long time. And I, I got the job uh, as a copywriter for the catalog. Um, okay. And we, still, we still do mail some paper catalogs even today. Okay. Um, but we're mostly known as a, an internet, you know, retail company at this right. point. And I had moved to North Carolina after living in New York after college. I worked in publishing and moved here with um, an ex and saw an ad in the paper for a copywriter. And I was familiar with the Adam and Eve catalog. My roommate and I had gotten them in college when okay. we, started, we weren't getting enough mail. So we signed up for every catalog <laughs> known to man. And um, I thought, well, this would make a, an interesting story to you know go in and kind of see behind the scenes of what this is all about. And I had envisioned, you know, kind of a, a basement with a bunch of dirty old men and you know, right. car, random cardboard boxes. And, and I get to the interview and it's one of the um, most professional places I'd ever been. A lot of women in management. They had rooms with graphs and, and all kinds of things where they tested, you know, the direct mail offers to see what worked and what didn't. And, you know, it was, it was stuff I had never learned in advertising in college. And I was pretty much blown away. Wow. Yeah. So started off writing copy for the catalogs and then, you know, web. And um, after a couple of years, we decided we wanted to stop flying so far under the radar. We were 
I guess, ready to promote ourselves a little bit more. And so I headed up the public relations efforts at that point. And I've been doing that for, yeah, 20 something years now. Wow. Okay. So, so tell me a little bit about the history of Adam and Eve. So it's obviously it's been longer than 25 years. So, you know, who founded it and when and Yeah. So we are about to celebrate our 50th anniversary in a couple of years. So we're definitely the oldest and, you know, most known adult um, retail company in America. And our founder, Phil Harvey, actually started the company as part of his master's thesis while he was at the University of um, North Carolina in Chapel Hill. He put an ad in several newspapers around the country offering condoms And it challenged the Comstock law, which up until that point had made it illegal to provide birth control information or um, products anywhere except, I guess, your doctor or, you know, possibly pharmacies behind the the counter. And I guess he waited to see if he was going to be prosecuted. And that that never happened. And the money started rolling in. People, you know, really like the anonymity of being able to order their condoms discreetly like that. And from there, they started sending, he and his partner um, started sending out flyers offering different things, mostly sexually related, but they they tried other things that didn't fare as well. He laughs about how he tried model shipbuilding kits and um, (laughs) (laughs) not nearly as interesting. Was this a political or philosophical move on his part to create access for things that people didn't have or was this just sort of a, a financial untapped market idea like what, what it was well it turned it turned into that but I think yeah. he was challenging you know the the government things and he was a part of kind of the hippie generation yeah. um free love and you know believed in sexual liberation and yeah and from there the money started coming in and they started offering more and more and the sexually oriented items were always the best sellers so right right yeah the catalog was born from that and how how is the business, I mean, almost 50 years, but even in the 25 that you've been there, mm-hmm. you know, what, what kind of changes have you seen? Obviously, there's a big shift towards the web, but in terms Definitely. of, you know, other patterns of, I don't know, of products or sales or marketing or what's Yeah. Changed? Well, when I first started, um, we still offered VHS tapes. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. And that was, you know, our probably our top seller at the time. Okay. And so that kind of led into DVD. And, um, you know, now that's only, what, 2%, I think, of our sales. Now we are um, definitely a toy company at this point. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been probably the biggest change. I think the other biggest change is we're allowed to advertise, knock on wood, places we were never allowed to before. I think people have become much more accepting of um, toys and I guess all things sexually related, much more so than they were 25 years ago. Right. So it doesn't seem like such a dirty secret or something like that. Exactly. Right? Something that's shameful or embarrassing or taboo. Right. Right. Yeah. So what's been the best part of this for you? And, you know, what's been the most challenging? Um, wow. That's a good question. <laughs> I mean, for me personally, you know, I grew up in a little town in Tennessee and sex was very taboo. And you waited until you were married and you only did it to have children. And I mean, that was you know, the message, right. I don't think anybody really believed that, that, but I think that was the message that, you know, we were given. Right. And, um, I mean, for me, working here has been very liberating sexually. I've learned that women enjoy sex and that it can be a joyous, happy, fun experience. And yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably the most important thing personally. And right. I have two teenage daughters and I'm trying to instill that in them, that sex doesn't have to be something that you're ashamed of or, or feel guilty about. Right. Right. I mean, when I think about sex toys, and some, sometimes I avoid that language, actually, you know, and we'll say aids to sexual pleasure, or, mm-hmm. I mean, they're really, you know, a lot of this is actually therapeutic. You know, I'm a sex therapist, so I'm working right. in, in practice with people that are struggling, and, and these can be very valuable resources and tools. I mean, yes, it can be fun and games mm-hmm. and, and titillating and things like that, but it, there's also a very, you know, significant purpose for a lot of this equipment. You know? Definitely. And, and you know, we get letters from women in their 40s, 50s, 60s thanking us, saying that they, you know, finally ordered a, a toy, a vibrator and had an orgasm. And yeah. it was something they had never experienced before. And I right. think that's so important. Yeah. Hi, 
Jessica here, just taking a quick break in the show today, and I have exciting news. My new book is available on Amazon. I'm so excited. I've been working on this for about a year and a half, and I'm just thrilled to have it to share. So it's called Sex Without Stress, A Couple's Guide to Overcoming Disappointment, Avoidance, and Pressure. So if you search on Amazon, you will find it. It will be available in print form as well as Kindle. It's being released September 25th. So depending on when you're listening to this, it may already be out or it's available for pre-order. I wrote this for all the couples out there, good couples who are struggling with sex and don't see a way forward. Totally normal to struggle with your sex life because we run into obstacles in life from sexual dysfunction to lack of desire, even just a busy life. It's it's normal to struggle, it's very common. And the book helps you transform how you think about sex, how you think about relationships, and then walks you through an experiential nine phase process to totally transform your sex life. If you're interested, look it up. I'd appreciate feedback or reviews if you read it. I'd love to know what you think. Back to the show. So I was struck in reading your bio and getting ready for this interview, you know, that you have become certified, you know, as a sex, what, certificate in sex therapy or sex education, sorry, from mm-hmm. a certain institute and you're pursuing certification with ASEC. And, and I'm, I'm curious about the motivation for that. I mean, it seems wonderful. I'm, you know, thrilled to hear that, but somewhere along the line, it sounds like it became important to become more educated and certified and bring like a more sexual training to this process for you? Yeah. Well, I mean, part of my job is to promote the company and to promote the toys. And, you know, I felt like that kind of goes hand in hand with that in a way. Yeah. Um, Educating ourselves, educating others about how our bodies work and how we can make the most out of these toys or whatever. We don't just sell toys, but that's definitely the biggest thing. Right. Right. Is that something that's sort of promoted in the company? Are there a lot of people that get that kind of training? No, as far as I know, I'm the only one here. Um, oh, wow. We do, yeah, we do work with a, a therapist, an outside therapist, um, mm-hmm. Dr. Jenny Schuyler. I don't know if you're familiar with her. No, I don't know her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, with the media, a lot of times there are questions that I don't feel comfortable answering. So we, we pass those on to her. Right. And, right. Um, yeah. And we have Q&As on our website where people write in and ask questions. And But yeah, I think it's very important. And I, I do think they go hand in hand especially these days. Yeah. So what's the process? I mean, I don't know what you actually, how much you know of this process, but like new products, mm-hmm. new items, new, you know, directions that the company might go. How, how are those? How do you find those things? How do you source them? How do you decide what to carry, what not to carry? Well, actually for years, and I, as far as I know, this is still how it goes. You know, most manufacturers approach us mm-hmm. and they'll send us samples in and we have new products meetings every Friday where a number of people in our marketing department sit around and pass these toys around and look at all the bells and whistles and how strong it is and what makes it different than other things we're already carrying. They kind of go through a rigorous <laughs> review process like that. Yeah. To see if they're worthy of, of being on the website. Right. Um, the other thing we have to worry about is if they can fulfill um, the number of products that we need. Ah, right. Because it's such a high volume. Yeah, that can be daunting business. to some people. Okay. Right. Yeah. And then I was... But yeah, we're always looking. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I just wondered if do, do people in the in the company get ideas about, wow, there should really be a this or a that gadget, you know? And and, yeah, and we do. We have a suggestion box, yeah. and um, on occasion, if if someone comes up with some brand new, you know, idea, they can get some uh, nice cash rewards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, yeah, right. So I'm I'm curious to harken back to your copywriting days a little bit. This must have been different copy than you had ever done <laughs> before, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are only so many ways that you can say breast or, yeah, you know. right. So that was part of my question. Like, what did you learn about writing descriptions and, you know, inviting yeah, I think, some of this stuff? You know, it's, it's got to be such a challenge because how many different ways can you describe sexual acts, right? And then, and right. how explicit are you and how titillating versus how educational? Yeah. So it's a fine line, I think, but you have to, you know, kind of keep the fun, lighthearted edge with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's different. You just 
I always tried to call out um, whatever made that item different, yeah. um, new or unusual or different. I will say that, you know, at the time I was writing a lot of copy for DVDs and there's nothing quite like coming in on a Monday morning and, you know, putting a DVD in the player and, and <laughs> that first thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, I guess you would have to basically watch them to be able to write it up, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I've logged a lot of hours. That wow. Morning. And what do you know of your clientele? I mean, of, of the customers, do you have any sense of, you know, geographic location or age range or relationship status? Or, you know, are there statistics about we, you know, we who's shopping at Adam and Eve? Yeah, we, we try to do some research every couple of years. Mm-hmm. And um, we're finding a lot of women and couples where it used to be about 90% male and 10% mm-hmm. female. It's about 60% women, I believe now. Okay. Forty percent men and couples. I mean, couples often order things together, and that's, right, that's kind right. of hard to discern. Yes. Um, yeah. Average age is, I think, thirty-five and up. Okay. Yeah, we try to appeal to a younger demographic in a lot of, of ways, but I think they don't have um, a lot of the disposable income, and you yeah, know, they're probably having a lot of sex anyway. So I don't know. Right. They, right. And it, it may be more likely to be working well us. and not. <laughs> new <laughs> some new input or something exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah so and um you know metropolitan areas generally um mm. have you know more customers than remote areas but i don't know i think we need to look at that a little bit more yeah and i'd imagine you're getting a lot of repeat customers mm-hmm. definitely right. yeah 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 we have customers that have been with us since the beginning wow so what are the most popular categories of items I mean, I know you said toys, really, but what mm-hmm. what are you finding are the best sellers these days? Well, a G spot toys are still, you know, doing very well. But lately, we've seen. I don't know if you're familiar with like the Satisfier and the Womanizer and that type of massager. Uh, not no, not by name anyway. Okay, those are kind of a new generation of um, vibrators for women. Instead of you know just vibrating or, or throbbing or whatever, they um actually create like a, an air vortex. So they mimic cunnilingus. Ah. Mm-hmm. And it's a totally different kind of philosophy and they're doing really well. And a lot of women swear by those. Okay. Is there, is there a name for that type of stimulator? I don't think there is a real name for <laughs> Not that. Not yet, right? So, <laughs> so we need to come up with one, definitely. Okay. Yeah, so p- people are putting a lot, I mean, I'm sure t- lots of people are putting a lot of energy into this, how to get a better, a better toy, a better aid, you know, that this is a, this is big business. Right, right. Yeah. And, you know, these days, Amazon is our biggest competitor. Right. I bet Which that's... is kind of crazy to think about, you know? Yeah. So how do you compete? Well, I mean, we try to, um, you know, build off of our reputation and our longevity. Mm-hmm. And um, we have our 100% money back guarantee on toys. Oh, and, okay. Yeah. So and I just... guess they are, um, in some ways, hand-selected. I mean, you know, the, the scrutiny or the... the selectivity that you guys demonstrate right? definitely yeah. definitely so the yeah. things have been things have been pre-approved in a way right yeah anything right. else you you want uh, listeners to know about adam and eve um gee i don't know if you haven't tried adam and eve before i suggest you try and um, we have a special offer for your listeners oh great um yeah for 50 percent off almost any one item and free shipping if you use code better 50 50 or five zero, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check out um, at adamandeve.com. Yeah, you can get free shipping and 50% off almost any one item. Oh, wow. That's very generous. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that'll be a good incentive to get people over to the site and checking it out. And yeah, I'm, I'm sure that'll Yeah, and it's not just toys. We also have, you know, games. We have a lot of lingerie. We have some swimsuits that are on sale right now, too. Oh, okay. Um, lubes and lotions and massage oils and and. We do still carry some DVDs too. Right. So, something <laughs> for everybody. Yeah. Do you, have you moved to the streaming platform at all or it's we still do. physical copies? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yep. Seems yeah. Like and that's, thing. that's working out really well for us. I think you can buy, you know, just minutes. And since most people only watch for about six minutes on the yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. you can get your money's worth. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for being with me and having the conversation. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. Sure. You've been listening to Better Sex. Please visit our website, bettersexpodcast.com, for show notes and additional episodes.
And that's a wrap for today. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. If you are enjoying the podcast, if some of this material resonates with you and you would like to make a difference and make sure that this keeps coming out in the world once a week, ongoing, there are a couple things you could do to show your appreciation. The first would be to go to iTunes and rate and review the show. That really helps us be found by new listeners when you review the show on iTunes. You can find a link at bettersexpodcast.com slash iTunes. The other thing I want to invite you to consider is becoming a Patreon. For a small monthly pledge, you get some benefits. So for $2 a month, you get advanced access to every single episode. For $5 a month, you get a chapter of my upcoming new book. And for $10 a month, I host quarterly get to know you and question and answer chats over the web. And you get invited to that. I would love to have your membership in that become part of the Better Sex family. You can find a link at bettersexpodcast.com slash Patreon, which is P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Again, thanks for listening. I'm glad you're here. Feel free to comment, ask questions, get in touch. I'd love to hear from listeners. Thanks. Thanks.